Hey everybody, Stephen here with Small Family Adventures. I hope you're doing well. Today is Sunday, and do you know what that means? That means that it's time for devotions. It's our family Bible devotion time, and uh, so let's get into it. What are we doing today? Well, just what we started the last couple weeks. Uh, this is our sixth week now, and we are in the book of Romans. So if you have your Bible, get out and go to Romans chapter 6 and we are going to to be in there uh, for a few minutes today and this is kind of a small chapter but it's huge it's big um, <clears throat> it has a big big message for us and how we should live as believers what is our condition in Christ um, so and uh, so let's move on and let's get started if you have a Bible Go ahead and turn there if you don't go to biblegateway.com and go check out Romans 6. I am using, if you want to follow along directly, the English Standard Version. It'll say ESV. Um, and I'll be using this nice Bible uh, that my sister got me. I'm really, really thankful for getting that. Um, so let's get started. Verse 1. Actually, I want to I want to back up and go to verse 20 of chapter 5 because it's a lead-in to the first verse of 6. Now, the law came in to increase the trespass, or, or sin. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that, as sin, excuse me, as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we start today's chapter, chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. Some other versions of the Bible say, God forbid. How can we who died to sin still live in it? If you looked at the thumbnail for today's, um, today's video, it says, <laughs> uh, dead to sin, right? So, dead to sin. Dead is dead. Either we're dead or we're not, right? We are dead to sin. In Christ Jesus, we are dead. We are made holy. Holy means set apart for God, right? And, uh, and uh, so if we're dead to sin, we don't sin. We, or we struggle in this life to not sin. We are being, the old is passing away, the new is coming up. The new is being made that's sanctification we have salvation and then sanctification salvation happens right away when we when we profess jesus christ as lord and we we put our faith and our trust in his righteousness and in his works that his righteousness becomes our own and so from then on we strive to to obey him not for salvation, but because we love him, right? Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, right? Quite clear on that. Dead is dead. Now this chapter is going to go on to show us that we're going to be a slave, we're going to be a servant to somebody. It's going to be a servant or slave to sin, or we're going to be a servant or a slave to righteousness. Sin, righteousness, the devil, Jesus Christ, God. Are we going to be a slave and, and follow our old nature? Or are we going to follow our new nature? In Christ Jesus, we are freed from sin. We're going to read that here in a second. It's like being in a jail. Sin is that jail. And the door is wide open. And we can walk out. But we refuse to. And which is, why, why would we do that? We are free from sin. Why would we stay there? Let's move on. Um, verse 4. No, verse 3. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. It has no power over us. I added that last section. That's not in the scripture. But that's what being free means. So that we no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So here's what we have. He's setting this up because there are going to be people who say, wow, well, if grace, if we get more grace for sin, you know, because grace is always, grace is always going to overtake sin, right? Uh, what does it say here? Where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, it said in the previous chapter. Well, if that's going to happen, then why don't I just keep sinning? Because I'll just get more grace. Well, that's foolishness. That's foolish talk. And I kind of wonder if you're really changed, if you're really in Christ Jesus yet. Because we will want to be fully in him. We will want to live for him. If we love him, we will keep his commandments. Now, on this side of heaven, we will deal with our old nature. And there will be times that we will fall. And if we fall, we have an advocate. We have somebody that goes to the Father and says, Hey, this is my child. And that's Jesus. He, he go, he, you know, look, look at my work, Jesus says. See, when Jesus died, he, he died for our, our present our past, and our future sins, our whole life. You know, he took that all upon himself. And we look to him, right? But when we're in that, we won't want to stay there. If we are in Christ, we will want to bust out of that old nature and not let it rain. There's no reason for it to rain. It is dead. It is dead to me, right? I am alive in Christ. And in, uh, I'm not a slave to that old nature, but I'm a slave to my new nature. Dead is dead. Holy is holy. Some notes. Uh, united with Christ, we are made holy. If we sin as believers, what does this say about our union with Christ? Is it real? Do we really care? Who are we a slave to? Sin or righteousness? And Jesus said, if you love me, okay, I said that before. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Um, and then I had another thought. If we obey out of an act of love, we obey because we are changed. The desire to obey and the action on that desire by obeying are the works that show we are changed. Uh, James 2 says, faith without works is dead. So if, if we don't have that desire to obey... Um, if we don't have the desire to, to obey and we actually take action and obey, that, those, that work of that action of obeying, not for our salvation, but it's proof that we are indeed a changed person. Um, let's move on. Verse 15. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? Reminds me of an old song uh, from uh, 20 or 30 years ago. 
um, that said, uh, I forget who the, the gentleman was, um, but it says, you're going to serve somebody. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. We, we will. We are made in that way. And actually, this Greek word for serving as slaves is doulos in the Greek. Doulos. In, in other, pa other, other translations, it might say serve or bond servant. <clears throat> it really means slave. And, 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 um, but the slavery is different depending on which side of the fence you're on. And, and um, um, let, me, let me read it this way. If you are a slave to sin and death, you will fall deeper into sin and death. This is a slavery of darkness, bondage, and fear. But if you are a slave to righteousness, you will move closer to God and the freedom found in him. This is a slavery of light, freedom, and life. Um, I really like the way they, they people that set this up. Um, great, great, great. Um, in Christ, there's freedom there. Um, let's continue on here. Verse 17. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to sin. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, wow. What a great thing, huh? That uh, there's life, there's light, there's liberty, there's freedom in being a slave to righteousness. Um, and today uh, at, at church... Um, I want to bring up a little bit about what, what he talked about. Um, and that is the value of what we have and how we should guard that. Um, you know, he was talking in context of love um, and singleness and, um, but, and husbands and wives and, and, and such. But, but I want to take it to, to everybody. And uh, because it, it goes to, it fits to everybody. And, and we'll start off by reading Proverbs 4.23. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. And um, what God has given you, this life, this righteousness, protect it. Um, protect it so that you stay obedient um, how much do you value what God has given us? How much do you value? Now, pastor today, when he talked, he talked about um, how valuable we are, and he, he kind of equated that with a painting to help us understand. Now, obviously, we are more valuable than paintings, but um, there's a painting, he said, in, uh, in France, and this uh, woman had it in her kitchen hanging up there so she can look at it all the time. And uh, come to find out, long story short, it was valuable, worth millions and millions of dollars. Now, she kept it up there in her kitchen hanging up. But do you think it stayed there once they found out how valuable it was? No, it ended up in a museum, protected behind glass, put away on a wall. People had to stay away. There was, a, I'm sure, uh, some type of a, of a rope that kept people from 
you know, at a distance to view it from afar. It was, became valuable. They found out that it was a valuable. Um, it was valuable from the one who painted it. And likewise, when you go to find out the value of something, to determine value, there are two things. Who made the thing? And how much is somebody willing to pay for it? Well, brother and sister, listen. You are so valuable in Christ Jesus. He loves you. Why? Number one, who made you? He himself made you. You are valuable. More valuable than a pearl. More valuable than the most diamonds in the world. He loves you. And then, what kind of a price was paid? He left earth to become a man. He left glory to become a man. He suffered. He died. He lived. He was obedient to God unto death for you, for me, because he loves you, because you are valuable, and because I am valuable. And what do we do with that? How, we need to protect ourselves. We need to put up boundaries. If there's uh, places in our life that we are more apt to disobey God in, that our old nature might try to rise up and say, no, you are still a slave to this. When we're not, put up boundaries that will keep you from going there. Um, you know, that's up for you to, to figure out in your head what's going to keep you away from that thing, that sin. And... Um, how valuable are you? You are valuable. You are very valuable. Now, um, we have, uh, as we close out here, I have a valley of vision here that I would like to read. And, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go for, for today. All right. If you have this book, The Valley of Vision, turn to, uh, where was that? Do, 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 20, number 20, page 20. Union with Christ. O oh, Father, you have made man for the glory of yourself, and when not an instrument of that glory, he is a thing of naught. No sin is greater than the sin of unbelief, for if union with Christ is the greatest good, unbelief is the greatest sin, as being cross to your command. I see that whatever my sin is, yet no sin is like disunion from Christ by unbelief. Lord, Keep me from committing the greatest sin and departing from him, for I can never in this life perfectly obey and cleave to Christ. When thou takest away my outward blessings, it is for sin, and not acknowledging that all that I have is of you, and not serving you through what I have, and making myself secure and hardened. Lawful blessings are the secret idols and do most hurt. The greatest injury is in the having, the greatest good in the taking away. In love, I don't know this word, divest me of blessings that I may glorify you the more. Remove the fuel of my sin, and may I prize the gain of a little holiness as overbalancing all my losses. The more I love you with a truly gracious love, the more I desire to love you, and the more miserable I am at my want of love. The more I hunger and thirst after you, the more I faint and fail in finding you, the more my heart is broken for sin, the more I pray it may be far more broken. My great evil is that I do not remember the sins of my youth, nay, the sins of one day I forget the next. Keep me from all things that turn to unbelief or lack of felt union with Christ. Brother and sister, friends, I hope you have a good week. Go with God. And remember, dead is dead. We are dead in sin. But alive in Christ. We are slaves to him and his righteousness. And we are the better for it. Go with God and I hope you have a great day, all right? I, Lord willing, will see you next time, all right? From my family to yours, you have an amazing day. See you next time. Bye.